सब्सक्राइब टू आवर यूट्यूब चैनल एंड प्रेस द बेल आइकन सो दैट यू नेवर मिस एनी वीडियो लेसन फ्रॉम राउज आई एस स्टडी सर्कल ऑल ऑफ यू हु आर प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर द सिविल सर्विस एग्जामिनेशन शुड अंडरस्टैंड द इम्पोर्टेंस ऑफ ऐसे पेपर एंड पे अटेंशन टू दिस फर्स्ट दिस पेपर ऑफ टू हंड्रेड फिफ्टी मार्क्स एंड इट्स वेट इज अराउंड ट्वेल्व पॉइंट फाइव परसेंट इन योर रिटर्न प्लस इंटरव्यू स्कोर दिस इज अ सिग्निफिकेंट पोर्शन एंड हेंस यू शुड प्रिपेयर दिस वेरी सीरियसली सेकेंड इंपॉर्टेंट आस्पेक्ट इज एवरेज स्कोर ऑफ जी एस पेपर ऑफ द कैंडिडेट्स हु एक्चुअली क्लियर द एग्जामिनेशन होवर्स फ्रॉम अराउंड नाइनटी फाइव टू हंड्रेड फाइव मार्क्स एट द सेम टाइम एवरेज मार्क्स ऑफ एस ए फॉर दीज पीपल इज अराउंड वन एंड थर्टी प्लस टॉपर्स यूजली स्कोर वन फोर्टी प्लस मार्क्स इन दिस पेपर एंड टेक अ लीड ओवर द कॉम्पिटिशन थर्ड एस ए पेपर डेवलप्स ऑन योर फाउंडेशन ऑफ जनरल स्टडीज योर नॉलेज एंड अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ वेरियस सब्जेक्ट्स एबिलिटी टू प्रेजेंट योर आइडियाज लूसिडली कवरिंग अ वाइड स्पेक्ट्रम ऑफ इंटर रिलेटेड आइडियाज एंड इनहेरेंट स्किल फॉर प्रेजेंटिंग योर आइडियाज इन अ सिस्टमेटिक एंड पावरफुल मैनर helps you in reaping more benefits from your general studies in order to help you prepare for the essay paper in a systematic and gradual manner raws ias has started mains essay test series and qip program the first class of the session will be an open session that all of you can join the session will take place on 12th of october at 10:30 am there is a link in the description through which you can register yourself for the session attend the session and ensure a better chance for clearing the mains examination hello and welcome to the daily news simplified an analysis of the hindi newspaper from upsc perspective today we will discuss the daily edition of the hindi newspaper dated 14th october 2020 and the articles that we will discuss today are displayed on your screen now before starting this discussion you should go through this self assessment test about which we have discussed in this dns video and at the end of this discussion you will find the answers for these questions so let us take up the first article now now this article on page number 6 has been written by the former vice president of india mr hamid ansari and this article is related to the recent peace agreement that was signed between united arab emirates and israel now this agreement gains significance because it has been signed between israel and uae which is an arabic country and we note that there has been long pending issues between israel and the arabic countries because the arabic countries have been supporting the cause of statehood of palestine however israel has not acceded to this demand of creation of the state of palestine in the west bank and the gaza strip in israel so in this background the author states that the arab unity which was once witnessed against israel for the creation of the state of palestine is no more visible now and it has lost its geopolitical significance as well so in this background the author says that rather than looking for a two state solution in the form of separate countries and states of palestine and israel the palestinian liberation organization should look for a one state solution or should fight for autonomy within the state of israel itself now you should note that this issue of israel uae peace agreement was in news in the month of august and was covered elaborately in the daily news simplified videos and in those videos we looked at some of the possible reasons for such kind of agreement happening at this point of time in history secondly we have also looked at previous efforts at finding a solution to the israel and the arabic countries problem and also solution to the issue of israel palestine Besides that the Middle Eastern region is also important for us from the preliminary examination point of view. Now this issue of the peace deal between Israel and UAE its implications and the reasons for such an agreement have already been discussed in previous DNS videos in the month of August and also in the Focus magazine of September 2020. So what we'll do is that we will revise from the Focus magazine only the important points that are related to this ua israel peace deal from our exam point of view and in this regard you can go through the previous dns videos related to this issue to understand the issue in detail so you can go through this dns video of 14th august 2020 in which this ua israel peace agreement was discussed in detail again you can also go through the dns of 15th august 2020 and in this dns video 
we have discussed different aspects of this UA Israel peace deal. So after this, let us revise from the Focus magazine of September 2020 some important points related to the UAE Israel peace agreement or the Abraham Accords and also some important facts for us from the preliminary examination point of view. So now under this agreement, the UAE and Israel have agreed to establish full diplomatic ties. Also it makes United Arab Emirates the first Gulf Arab state to do so and only the third Arab nation after Egypt and Jordan to have active diplomatic ties to Israel. So now why does this UAE-Israel agreement assume great significance at this point of time? Now this is because the UAE and the Israel have been at continuous confrontations in the Middle Eastern region and that has mainly been because of the creation of a Jewish state of Israel in the Middle Eastern region. And you can see that the first war that was fought between Arab and Israel was in 1948 immediately after the establishment of the state of Israel. Now here from our preliminary examination point of view, the location of the Middle Eastern region is very very important and a lot of questions have been asked in the previous years related to the location of this region. So if you look at this map you can find the location of Israel here and it opens up into the Mediterranean Sea and also it is surrounded by Syria, Jordan and Lebanon and also Egypt on its southern part. So you can see that the Saudi Arabia and Iraq do not share a border with the country of Israel. Again if you look at the location of Israel you will find that it shares its border with Egypt's Sinai Peninsula. Also here it is important to look at the location of Gulf of Suez and the Gulf of Aqaba and both these are located in the Red Sea. Now after this let us look at the map of Israel, the West Bank, the Gaza Strip and the Golan Heights. Now in this it is important to note that these West Bank and the Gaza Strip region are claimed by the Palestine and they want to create a state out of these territories. However, Israel has been forcibly colonizing the West Bank and the Gaza Strip. So you can see that the Gaza Strip opens up into the Mediterranean Sea. And on the other hand, the West Bank shares its border with the Dead Sea and which in turn is shared between Israel and Jordan. Further, if you look at the location of Golan Heights, you can see that it is located here and it shares its border with Syria, Jordan on the southern part, Israel on the western part and also Lebanon on the northern part. Now this deal between the Israel and the United Arab Emirates aims at establishing full diplomatic relations and they aim at cooperating the areas like the investments, tourism, establishment of direct flights, telecommunications, technology, energy, healthcare, etc. Now earlier the Israeli Prime Minister had vowed to annex the Jewish settlements in the West Bank region. And we note that this region is claimed by the Palestinians. And this move of Israeli Prime Minister was also supported by the Trump administration or the President of United States of America. However, as a part of this agreement between the UAE and the Israel or the Abraham Accords, the Israel has suspended its plan of annexing or declaring its sovereignty over the areas of West Bank. And it is now focusing its efforts on expanding ties with other countries in the Arab and the Muslim world. So this is a welcome gesture in the Palestinian region where earlier the Prime Minister of Israel was planning to occupy or or declare its sovereignty in the Jewish settlements in the West Bank. So after looking at the key aspects of this deal, let us look at what have been the past efforts for bringing a truce between the Arab and the Israeli nations. Now we note that historically the Arab and the Israeli countries have been conflict ridden and the first war between Israel and the Arabic countries was fought in 1948 after the formation of the state of Israel. After this, the Israel and the Arab countries fought three more wars and they were in the Suez War of 1956, the Six Day War in 1967 and the Yom Kippur War of 1973. So after this, let us look at the main initiatives that have been undertaken to bring peace between Israel and the Arabic nations. So first such effort was undertaken in the year 1967 
in the form of UN Security Council Resolution 242. And this was brought immediately after the Six Days War of 1967. So this resolution called for withdrawal of Israeli armed forces from the territories occupied in the Six Days War in return for all states in the areas to respect each other's sovereignty, territorial integrity and independence. After that, in 1978, in the form of Cape David Agreement, Israel and Egypt agreed on a framework for regional peace and that called for an Israeli withdrawal in stages from Egypt's Sinai Peninsula. And also the Israel agreed for a transitional Palestinian government in the West Bank and Gaza. And this Camp David Agreement led to the first peace treaty being signed between an Arabic nation and Israel in the form of Israel-Egyptian Peace Treaty. And immediately after this, another peace treaty was signed between Israel and Jordan. Further, between 1993 to 1995, Oslo Accords were signed and they were talks between Israel and the Palestinian Liberation Organization. And this had resulted in interim peace accords and these called for establishment of a Palestinian interim self-government and an elected council in West Bank and Gaza for a five-year transitional period. And also, the Israeli troops would withdraw and negotiations would be there on permanent settlements. Further, in the year 2002 and 2003, the Bush administration agreed for the creation of a Palestinian state and this came to be called as the two-state solution. And further, in the year 2002, the Arab League had brought a peace plan and this called for full Israeli withdrawal from the occupied territory and Israel's acceptance of a Palestinian state and this was formally known as the two-state solution to the problem of Israel and Palestine. However, in the year 2019, the Israeli Prime Minister had vowed to declare its sovereignty over the Jewish settlements in the West Bank territory. And this move was supported by the Trump administration. However, under the Abraham Accords, the Israel has given up its plan to declare its sovereignty over the Jewish settlements in the West Bank region. Now, after looking at the past efforts, an important area is the probable reasons for the signing of such kind of deal. So, the first reason for the finalization of the Abraham Accords has been the rise of Iran or the Iran factor. And in this, it has been said that the old enmity between the Arab countries and the Israel have now dissipated. However, the Middle Eastern region is witnessing the rise of Iran, which is a Shia nation. Also, Iran is rising in terms of military power and also it is keen on developing the military technology in the region. And this has made the Arab countries to come into agreement or backroom negotiations with Israel, which is also one of the important players in the Middle Eastern region. So one of the reasons for signing of such a deal is the Cold War between the Iran and the Saudi Arabia-led countries. And this is seen as a conflict between the Shia countries and the Sunni countries in the Middle Eastern region. Also, one of the reasons for signing of this agreement is the security concern in the Middle Eastern region. And we note that there has been rise of Islamic State in Syria and Iraq. And also, proxy wars are going on in various areas like Yemen, Iraq, etc. Also, we have seen that Iran had targeted two of the oil facilities of Saudi Arabia. So, because of the rising security concern in the Middle Eastern region, a lot of Arabic countries are now concerned regarding the security of the region and as such they are in backroom negotiations with Israel which has one of the strongest military in that region. Also the Israel and the Arab countries want that the cancellation of Iran nuclear deal that has happened under the Trump administration is not reversed. So in order to ensure that the cancellation of Iran nuclear deal is permanent in nature, Israel and the Arab countries have been coming together. And this agreement between UAE and Israel is a reflection of such kind of motivation in the region. Further, this agreement is being seen as a sign for developing slow and sustainable ties between Israel and the Arabic countries. Further, the Israeli Prime Minister has come under attack because of the mishandling of coronavirus outbreak and as such, in order to satisfy the local polity, he has gotten into an agreement with the Arab nations which is being seen as an important step for reviving his image in Israel. Further, the Trump administration in the United States of America 
has come under attack for its foreign policy and in this his efforts to create peace in the koreas has failed and also there has been limited progress on the afghanistan peace process further united states and china are indulged in the trade war currently and also the trump administration has been accused of sidelining the nato allies in europe so in this background this agreement between israel and uae which was brokered by the trump administration will now be claimed as an achievement by the trump administration in the upcoming elections in the united states of america so if more arab nations get into an agreement with iran it would dramatically bring all the sunni nations in the region in an anti iran alliance further the influence of iran and its proxies have fallen considerably in the region so in such a background such an anti iran alliance will become more powerful and will influence the geopolitics of this region however as more arab nations are moving away from the cause of the palestinian statehood turkey and iran will emerge as the strongest supporters of the palestinians in the muslim world further regarding the role of china in this region it has good ties with both the saudi arabia and iran which are the dominant players in the region so in this regard if china supports one of the groups it will decide the tilt of balance or the tilt of geopolitics in the region further india has maintained historic ties with both the shia countries as well as the sunni countries that is india has maintained good ties with both the iran as well as saudi arabia led countries and in this line india will have to balance its foreign policy between these two major groups further through this agreement one of the implications has been that the uae which is also an arab nation has now moved away from the previous demands that were decided in the arab peace initiative so it is clearly visible that the united arab emirates has toned down its stand on the palestinian cause so in this background it is being said that the palestinian leadership will be left alone in this conflict between israel and palestine and this has mainly been because the palestinian leadership has received support of the arab countries in the past however now this support is being toned down so in this regard india has consistently supported peace stability and development in the west asia which is also the extended neighborhood of india so in this context india has welcomed the full normalization of ties between uae and israel however india needs to watch its ties with iran because iran has criticized the normalization of relations between arab country and the israel also such a deal opens up new opportunities for india to play a much larger role in the regional security and stability in the gulf and that is because india has always had a special relation with both the uae as well as the israel and we already know that this region is very important for india from its energy supplies point of view and also the diaspora that lives in the middle eastern region and that is why india needs to play a bigger role in this region and that is why india has welcomed this peace agreement between the uae and the israel also one of the reasons for india to play a key role in this region is because of the rising influence of china in the region and in such a background india should make its moves before this market and this extended neighborhood comes under the chinese sphere of influence so in this article we have seen some of the basic aspects of the uae israel peace agreement or the abraham accords also we have seen the past efforts that have been made to bring peace between the arab countries and israel and also what were the probable reasons for signing of such an agreement at this point of time also we have seen the diplomatic implications for the middle eastern region and also what has been india stand and what india needs to do in this regard now you can see that from this topic of israel palestine issue and the geopolitics of the middle eastern region three questions have been asked in the preliminary examination in the years 2018 17 and 2015 in the year 2018 this question was directly related to one of the solution that has been proposed to the israel palestine issue and it is termed as the two state solution and is sometimes mentioned in the news in the context of the affairs of and we note that it is seen in the news in the context of the affairs of israel secondly if you look at this question that was asked in 2017 it was inspired from the question that was asked in 2015 and this question read which one of the following countries of the southwest asia 
does not open out to the Mediterranean Sea. And we have seen in the location of the Middle Eastern region that Jordan does not open up into the Mediterranean Sea. So the correct answer was B. Again, if you look at this question, it reads Mediterranean Sea is a border of which of the following countries? And as we have seen in the map that Jordan and Iraq do not share their border with the Mediterranean Sea and hence the correct answer is Lebanon and Syria. That is C, that is 3 and 4 only. Again, in the year 2015, a question was asked related to this topic, that is the area known as Golan Heights sometimes appears in news in the context of events related to. And we have seen in today's map that it is related to the Middle Eastern region. So as you can see that this region is very important for us from the preliminary examination point of view. So do go through the maps of this region carefully and see the locations of important areas that are mentioned in the news. With this, let's take up the next news article now. Now, this article on page number 7 is related to the Right to Information Act and it has completed 15 years. Now, we note that it is one of the important tools for empowering the citizens against the government. And it aims at holding the government accountable by making the information available to the citizen. However, over a period of time, concerns have been raised regarding the weakening of the RTI Act by various amendments and its way of functioning. So in this regard, in this article, we will mainly focus on the 2019 amendments to the Right to Information Act and how it has weakened the RTI Act. Also, we'll look at some of the general issues that are faced in the functioning of the Right to Information Act and the functioning of the information commissions. And they can be used in answering questions in the general studies paper too, in the governance part. Also, they can be used in writing answers in the ethics paper in the general studies paper 4. Now, the 2019 amendment has changed the tenure of the chief information commissioner and the state information commissioners and has also changed the terms of service of these offices. Now, the original act had set the term of the central chief information commissioner and the information commissioners at five years or until the age of 65, whichever is earlier. However, this amendment has removed the tenure of five years and has replaced it with the term for such term as may be prescribed by the central government. Further, the original act provided that the salaries and allowances and other terms of the service of the chief information commissioner shall be same as that of the chief election commissioner and those of an information commissioner shall be the same as that of election commission. However, the 2019 amendment has said that the salaries, allowances and other terms of services of the chief information commissioner and the information commissioners shall be such as may be prescribed by the central government. So the fixed tenure and the service conditions that were provided in the original act have now been done away with the amendment of 2019. And in this regard, the central government has been provided with the power of prescribing the term of the central information commissioners and also the service conditions. Further, regarding the state information commissioners, the original act provided that the tenure of service will be 5 years or 65 years of age, whichever is earlier. And regarding the salaries, allowance and other terms of services, the chief information commissioner of the state was to be considered as similar to the election commissioner. And the salaries and other terms of services of the state information commissioners were to be same as the chief secretary to the state government. However, in this again, the 2019 amendment has made the changes that the salaries, allowances and other terms of services shall be such as may be prescribed by the central government. And also, the central government will control through the rules, the terms and the conditions of appointment of commissioners in the state governments. Now, we note that security of tenure is one of the important factors for ensuring the independence of an institution. And we note that such security of tenure has been provided to the CAG or the Comptroller and Auditor General and other constitutional bodies as well. However, by removing the security of tenure and placing it in the hands of the central government, the independence of the institution of the right to information is at stake. Further, the independence of the institution is again at stake because if the information commissioners provide a decision which goes against the government, they can be removed at will by the government because of these new amendments. So this means that the amendments of 2019 will severely impact the independence of the institution of right to information and the information commissioners.
so this is one of the important amendment that has weakened the institution of right to information act now besides the weakening of the institution of rti by the amendments of 2019 another concern has been the lack of appointment or timely appointment of the information commissioners and in this regard the governments have failed to appoint the information commissioners on time and this has led to increased pendency of the rti cases further in various state commissions it has been observed that they are functioning at reduced capacity with less number of information commissioners and as such and as such it impacts the speedy disposal of the rti cases further the central information commission has been without a chief since the month of august further majority of the times pleas have been made in the supreme court for the appointment of the commissioners in the central information commission now despite the supreme court orders to fill all the vacancies six out of the 11 posts of commissioners in the central information commission are currently vacant and this includes the vacancy in the office of chief information commissioner so you can see that the government has failed to appoint the commissioners in the central information commission in a timely manner and this has adversely impacted the speedy disposal of the rti cases and as such there has been huge pendency in the rti cases now besides the weakening of the rti institution by the 2019 amendment and lack of timely appointment of the commissioners the other challenges include the low awareness levels among the people and especially among the marginalized sections about the rules and process of the rti application further there are non uniform rti rules and procedures across the states also there is no uniformity in the fee structure across the states and there has been unsupportive attitudes of the public information officers further rti activists have been intimidated and have been threatened by people who are in power also there has been ineffective record management system in the state field offices or the departments and there has also been lack of inadequate training to the public information officers etc and last but not the least there has been increased workloads on the pios due to understaffed positions of the public information officers so we have seen that these are some of the challenges in the functioning of the right to information act and some of the benefits of the rti act you might have studied in the static portion of the syllabus have also been provided in the pdf of today's discussion so do go through them and try and understand the rti act in a holistic manner with this let's take up the next article now now this article on page number 9 reads that pakistan is likely to remain on financial action task forces gray list now this issue of gray listing of pakistan by the financial action task force has been in news for past 2 years in this background let us understand some important facts related to this financial action task force from our preliminary examination syllabus and also in this regard we will understand what is meant by the terms gray listing and black listing under the financial action task force and also what is the important mandate of the fatf and they can be important for us from the preliminary examination point of view so now regarding the financial action task force you should note that it was created by the g7 countries in 1989 and it is the global money laundering and terrorist financing watchdog now for overseeing the issue of terror financing and money laundering across the globe the financial action task force has developed the fatf recommendations or the fatf standards and these ensure a coordinated global response to prevent organized crime corruption and terrorism and these help the authorities to go after the money of the criminals dealing in illegal drugs human trafficking and other crimes further besides money laundering terror financing etc The FATF also works to stop the funding of weapons of mass destruction. So here it should be noted that the FATF deals with money laundering, terror financing and also illegal drugs and human trafficking and other crimes. Besides these it also aims at stopping the funding for weapons of mass destruction. Now from our preliminary examination point of view important things that should be noted are that the FATF does not address at all issues related to low tax jurisdiction or tax competition so this means that FATF has no role in the taxation related issues 
Secondly, the FATF mandate focuses only on the fight against laundering of proceeds of crime and financing of terrorism. So this is the clear mandate of FATF that it aims at stopping global money laundering, terror financing and also money that comes out of organized crime that is illegal drugs, human trafficking etc. And also it aims at stopping the funding for weapons of mass destruction. However, it does not deal with any kind of taxation related issues. Now then there is a term called the FATF 40 plus 9. Now this FATF 40 plus 9 is a report containing a set of 40 recommendations which are intended to provide a comprehensive plan of action which is needed to fight against the money laundering. And in 2001, the FATF added 9 special recommendations to these 40 recommendations. And accordingly, these have come to be known as 40 plus 9 FATF standards. So this is another important term that can be asked in your preliminary examination. Then as we have learned in today's news article that the Pakistan is likely to remain on the grey list of FATF. So what is meant by this grey list or the black list? Now in this regard, the FATF issues a list of non-cooperative countries or territories and these are called as the FATF blacklist countries. Now these are the countries or territories that are considered to be uncooperative in the international efforts against money laundering and terror financing. Further, grey list countries are those countries which are under the watch of FATF and these are those territories which have strategic anti-money laundering or countering the financing of terrorism deficiencies for which they have developed an action plan with the Financial Action Task Force and it is monitored by the Financial Action Task Force. So the grey list countries are under the watch and blacklist countries are those countries which are non-cooperative in the field of money laundering and terror financing and accordingly Pakistan is on this grey list and is likely to remain in the near future. So these are few important points related to Financial Action Task Force, its mandate and also the grey list and the black list. With this, let's take up the next news article now. Now according to the World Economic Outlook report of the International Monetary Fund, the Indian economy is likely to contract by 10.3% in this fiscal year. And similarly it has provided growth projections for the global economy and also BRICS countries. Now what is important for us from the exam point of view are the reports that are brought out by the International Monetary Fund and they have been asked previously in the preliminary examination and in the future also they can be asked. So here it should be noted that the important reports by the IMF include the World Economic Outlook, Global Financial Stability Report, Fiscal Monitor, External Sector Report and Global Housing Watch or the Global Real House Price Index. Now besides the reports and the indices that are published by the International Monetary Fund, the reports and the indices that are published by the World Bank and the World Economic Forum are also very important. So do go through those reports and they have been asked previously in the preliminary examination and they can again be asked in the future preliminary examinations. So do go through all these reports. With this let's take up the next news article now. Now this article on page number 7 is related to the quadrilateral security dialogue which has been in news for quite some time. And this topic of quadrilateral security dialogue as an alliance against the rising influence of China has been discussed in detail and at depth in the Daily News Simplified of 8th October 2020 and also in the DNS of 1st October 2020 that is very recently. So do go through these articles to revise about the quadrilateral security dialogue, its strategic importance and also how it will be able to counter the rising Chinese influence and what are the things that need to be taken care of. Now with this we conclude today's discussion and these are the answers for the self-assessment test. And after this let us take up the question for the day. 